we can go ahead and start if you guys are ready. We'll start in Sukhasana. So just come seated on top of your blankets, right in the center. If you're using a block, make sure that both sit bones of your sitting bones can cover the block and then cross your legs at your mid shins. Center of your kneecaps, move out towards the top edge of your mat, move over one side to the other, hand upper hamstring, lower buttock, rotate out, draw back. Do this on both sides. And then take a moment to see if the sitting bones have moved away from one another, away from the midline. You bring your fingertips into your blankets or your mat or your blocks, press and lift your side rib cage, bring the very tops of your shoulders down. And here you wanna really spread your collarbone. So your arm bones extend out to the side. The tips of the elbows move out to the sides as well and keep your elbows bent for a moment. Bring your abdominal wall back in your sacrum and your tailbone down. Bring your hands to your heart. Next exhalation, close your eyes, begin to center yourselves here using your breath. <clears throat> Ujjayi breath. You want to move your inhalation out into your outer rib cage. As you fill the lungs with your inhalation, empty the lungs completely as you exhale the breath. The Ujjayi breath is audible, so there's a slight sound on the inhalation and the exhalation. Mr. Inger says that we find passivity and activity both in asana. So here there are places that you're passive, the muscles of the face. I'll chant on um, join in or you're welcome to just listen. Oh. Exhale your breath, bow your head, bring your chin to the groove of your neck. Bring your hands to the very tops of your legs. Center your head and as you exhale the breath, open the eyes and release the hands. Very good guys. Go ahead and come to the very top edge of your blankets. If you're using blankets, if you're using blocks, stay as you are. And if your legs are straight, you can use two blocks to do the same thing. We're just gonna come forward. So come forward, bring your blocks out in front of you. You wanna grip over your blocks, push down into your blocks and move them out in front of you. So don't round the spine guys, keep your spine moving into the body, your breastbone moving up towards your chin. Your outer feet, your outer ankle bones, and your outer hips drawing down, but also back. See if you can walk your fingertips, bring your fingers together, and then walk your fingertips out towards the very top edge of your blocks. And then take a grip over the blocks. Move weight into your hands. Turn the inner eyes of your elbows up. And then as you exhale the breath, you can look out in front of you, look towards the top of your mat, re-grip over your blocks and bring them back towards you. Perfect. And then switch your cross. So bring your opposite leg in, rotate the flesh once more. Blocks can come out in front of you. Before you come forward, guys, move the belly button up away from your pubic bone Lean forward, but keep that length. Grip over the blocks, push down into the blocks, move them forward. You wanna keep your outer feet grounded, your outer ankle bones, your outer knees are drawing towards your mat, as well as your outer hips. See if you can bring your fingers together and then walk your hands out again towards the very top edge of the blocks, the fingertips. Kind of grip over the blocks here. Push down with your hands. So put weight into your hands. Move your navel up and towards your breastbone. And then inhale, look out in front of you. You can grip over the blocks and exhale, release. 
Very good, guys. Go ahead and stretch the legs out and we'll rotate the buttock flesh. Even your feet. So make sure that your heels are even, your inner ankle bones are together, the base of your big toe joints. So you draw out through the base of your big toe joints as if you're pressing into the gas pedal. Take your strap in your hands. You may not need one to come forward, but I'm going to start with one. Rotate the legs from the outer to the inner. Stretch the strap out in front. Reach forward, bring your strap around your feet. Let's bring it to the, the um, toe joint. Inhale, lift up and exhale. Take the elbows out to the sides and fold. And then inhale, lift up, move the navel towards the breastbone and exhale, release. Very good, guys. I'm gonna do that again and you can reuse your strap or if you have the flexibility, come towards the top edge of your blankets, rotate the buttock flesh, grab one block, extend the block out, reach forward, bring the block to the feet. You can still use a strap with this and you can bend your knees, bring the block to your feet and then bring your strap around your feet. So push your heels into your block, pull your hands into your block and fold. Let's keep the elbows straight, keep the kneecaps straight. And guys, see if you can bring the pinky fingers of your hands down onto your mat. Pinky fingers come down onto the mat. Keep the elbows straight, walk the fingertips towards each other or walk the hands down the strap. Use that little bit of resistance to really open the spine. Great. And then inhale, lift up, stretch up and exhale to release. Very good, guys. Go ahead and move your blocks <clears throat> and your blankets over to the side. Let's do a quick blanket roll. How about that? Okay, so I'm gonna take one blanket and make a blanket roll. So it can be as thick or as thin as you need it to be. Like that. And this blanket is kind of, it's a big blanket, so it's not very thick, it's kind of thin. Um, so sit in front of your blanket with your knees bent and your feet against your mat. You'll bend your elbows, kind of hold the outer edges of your mat, lift your bottom and scoop your sacrum and your tailbone. Come down so that the tips of your shoulder blades are at your, at your blanket. You'll lift up and roll over the blanket. Don't bring the bottom down until you've got the upper arms out and grounded. And the blanket again at the very tip of the shoulder blades. And then to come seated or to come grounded, tuck the sacrum and the tailbone and come relaxed on the mat. Keep the knees bent here for a moment, guys, and draw your side abdominal wall down. But keep your knees bent and really use your feet. So as you descend or as you come reclined on your mat in any position, always use your feet. Always use your feet. So check that the blanket starts at the bottom edge of your shoulder blades. Take your arms out with the palms of your hands up towards the ceiling and really tuck your sacrum. Bring your side abdominal wall down. With your knees together and your feet, you can move your feet a little um, forward away from your bottom, not straight knees, guys. But just give a little bit of length around the hip flexors. If you're comfortable, you can begin to let your knees gently rock side to side. Not all the way over yet as the blanket is pretty high up the spine. So knees are definitely together. Pretend that they're tied together. 
So they move at the same time. As the knees go to the right, the abdominal wall rotates to the left. And remember, they're not moving all the way over yet and they're working as one unit. So the hips and the knees and the feet are working as one unit. The backs of the upper arms are grounded. Shoulder blades are spread away from the spine. You can really think of the backs of your hands remaining against your mat or the floor. Your knees moving the one direction and the abdominals moving opposite. Bring your knees to the center. Bring your elbows down onto your blanket or your mat. And I mind touch over the blanket roll. And then I'm just gonna kind of move over the blanket a little bit deeper. So the blanket is now down around the lower back rib cage. So it's below the shoulder blades, not quite as far down as the lumbar spine, but around the bottom edge of the back rib cage. And then again, shoulder blades move out towards your fingertips. The breastbone moves towards your chin and your abdominal wall moves towards your blankets or towards your mat. And again, you can kind of move your feet a little bit forward to see if you can get um, a little more length in the sacrum. The knees again can move from side to side and now they can go over a little bit deeper, but still using them as one. Still using them as one, right? So they can move over a little bit further. But really control this by using the opposite side. So knees going to the left. I'm really working to draw that outer right rib cage down. So think about that space being created at your side body. So the side body should lengthen here. Now the knees moving one direction, really reach and draw down opposite. And notice if your back rib cage comes up. So as you move your knees to the right, notice if the left back rib cage comes off of your blanket. And if so, draw the abdominal, draw that outer rib down to the blanket. You can bring your knees to the center and we'll move our blanket or we'll roll over our blanket a little bit deeper. So now it's down around the lumbar spine. The knees are still bent and you're still reaching out through the arms. So palms up. Shoulder blades really moving and reaching away from your spine. And that can be done by putting a little bit of extra weight or extension in your index finger. In your index, your index finger should really stretch out to your side. You can also take the thumbs and see, roll them back and down against the mat or the floor. Now the knees can go over to the right and this time take your time and let them go all the way over as you turn the abdominal wall to the left. See if you can stack the knees one on top of the other. Maybe bend your elbows, backs of your arms against your mat, lift your right shoulder blade up and take it to the right. And then again, really twist and look to your left. See if that outer left rib, and you can even use your left hand to draw the abdominal flesh to the left. Bring your knees up, let them go over to the left. Stack the knees and they may not end up being stacked as you just let them go over to the left. But once they're over to the left and against the mat, then stack them. So for me, I'd have to lift the right inner knee up and extend it out towards the left inner knee. 
that would be for me to get the knees to line up or to stack. And then draw the abdominal wall opposite of your knees. Ah, very good, guys. And then go ahead and bring your knees back to the center. Let's straighten the knees one at a time. And here you can take the arms over the head, but bring your inner feet together and really press out through the uh, base of your big toe joint. So press out like you're pressing the gas pedal with the base of your big toe joint as you reach out into your fingertips. Really stretch your arms. Good, keep the arms up and over the head, draw the abdominal wall down, and then do a dorsiflex. So really dorsiflex your feet. See if your toes will reach back towards your kneecaps. Good, dorsiflex. Press out into your heels, toes back towards the kneecaps. You feel that this is lengthening the lower, the back of your lower legs. Now change your foot um, uh, direction to a, a point. Point as heavily as you can. And then reach with your fingertips, abdominals down, back of the body really long. Notice that the front of your legs and front of your ankles are lengthened here. And then you can relax the arms, relax the feet, let the arms move back down to your side body. Bend your knees again, one at a time. You bring your feet onto your mat, bring your hands. You can walk your feet close to your bottom, lift your bottom, take your hands to your blanket roll and pull your blanket roll to your sacrum here. Once you get it here, cut, push it down towards your feet with your hands and then pull your torso back towards the top of your head. So again, you're just using the blanket to see if you can get some length in the lower back. Lift your bottom, push your blanket down right below the um, lower buttock, upper hamstring and straighten your knees one knee at a time and then relax, let your legs relax. Hopefully the spine is against your mat, especially the lower back, the lumbar spine, and that there's not an arch in the back. Perfect. Bend your knees one at a time. We'll put our feet against the mat. Bring your knees in. You can Hug the knees for a moment. See if you can keep your hips long though, guys. So don't lift your bottom up. Perfect. And then go ahead and roll over to your right and you can push down into your mat to come seated or to come up. And we'll go right from that to Adho Mukha. Varasana. So we'll bring the big toes together. We're trying to keep that exact same length. So you don't want to do this. You don't want to arch here, but you want to draw the abdominal wall back towards the spine here. So from here to watch here, and then walk the arms out, bring the forehead against your mat. Your chin moves towards the groove of your neck. Let your arms really lengthen out before you relax the elbows and the, the wrists. But once you get your arms out here, pretty, pretty long out in front, you can exhale and bend the elbows and just let them rest against the mat.
go ahead and let's bring our head and our gaze up. And I'm going to come hands and knees. We've been doing this one quite a bit lately, or I have anyway. And we're on our toes, but we're on our hands and our knees. And I'm gonna walk my hands over to the right and they're kind of close together. And then I'll press my weight back, moving that left sitting bone towards my left heel bone. See if you can keep some weight in your heels as you do this. So your toes are down, but you're really pressing your heels back. And then come up and we'll move over in the opposite direction. So you can bring them back center and then walk them over to the left and they're still out in front of you. And then you move your bottom back down towards your heels. So that right sit bone will move a little bit deeper, a little bit heavier than the left. Good, 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 good. Perfect. And then come back here to the center and we'll come into dog pose. So to come into dog pose, start with your knees bent, really get the length in your side body. The knees are bent, guys, and we don't want to have the feet and the hands too close. Once you get the length in the spine, draw the abdominal wall back, straighten the knees. So watch the difference. There's the arch here. So no arching in the low back. Keep moving the abdominal wall back and uh, up under the front rib cage. Push into your mat with your hands. So Really, you can pretend to pull your yoga mat or push your yoga mat forward. And with your feet, see if you can draw your yoga mat backwards. Move your bones. So you've got to hug the muscle to the bone, engage the quadricep. Right above the kneecap, draw back, but up. A few more seconds. Good, 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 good. And then exhale, release and come down. And you can rest any way that you want. Very good. Let's do dog pose again. And I'm gonna use a block. And let's see, the action of the arms, and, and we kind of talked about that a little bit in, in um, child's pose, but the action of the arms, guys, is not to come here with your weight. So remember in dog pose, you wanna use your hands and you wanna use your arms to do this. You wanna push to really get your, your length, your weight back. So your weight moves back. So I'm going to use a block this time, and I don't know, let's see. Yeah, I put it on just a thinner level, and I came hands and knees again, and then I'll bring the knees up, keep the knees bent, and really get the length, and then straighten the knees. See if we can keep our ears in line with our upper arms. Rotate the upper arm bones out, the lower arms in, so the thumb sides of your wrist rotate down towards your mat, okay? So the block is at the upper legs, really draw into the block, and then lift the knees up, push with the hands. So get as much length in the arms to move your weight back, really press. Don't arch your back. So draw your abdominal wall back towards your spine. Front of the, the bottom edge of the front rib cage draws down. And then your abdominal wall moves under your front rib cage. Good. And then come down and rest. Come down onto your knees, remove your block and rest for a moment. And so I'm gonna come up guys. And if you don't have a wall, it's okay. Well, kinda, I think it's okay. Just do what you can do with that. 
if you don't have a wall. So what I'm going to do is face the wall and I'm gonna bring the hands, let's bring the hands low. I'm, I really try to get the hands down around the waist to the lower part of the ribs. It's tough because my the heel of my hands don't go that far. You see there's tightness there. So I really wanna reach oh, 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 into the wall and then I'm gonna step back and I've gotta push with my hands and not put the right leg in front and the left leg back, right? And I wanna bring the ears in line with the upper arms. You guys watch for a moment. I'm gonna take that outer right foot and watch. I'm gonna drag the outer right foot back. You see, so it moves the hip. Don't arch the back here. Draw the abdominal wall back, get length. You're looking for length here. And then I'll release the left hand and I can even bring it outside of the foot. Push with the wall, watch the outer right hip. Look under the right armpit. Okay, we'll come back, come up and start over. Uh, let's see if you don't have a wall back of a chair or anything like that will work. So start by getting your hands, stand in front of the wall, guys, and then put your hands, um, see if you can get them down to the lower part of the ribs, closer to the waist, fingers up, fingers up towards the ceiling if you can. And then step back, right leg in front, left leg behind. Take a big step so that the legs and the feet are, the, the legs are apart separated, left leg out to the left, right leg straight out in front, and then fold in half. So come to a halfway position, good. Straight elbows, good, straight elbows, good. Now, rotate to your outer right foot, lifting your right arch up. Draw your outer right foot against your mat and drag your outer right foot back. That's great, and then bring the inner right foot down. Bring the inner right foot down. Keep drawing the outer right hip back. Release the left hand, left arm, and bring it to the outer um, right foot, or you can go to the right shin bone. Let it be heavy. Let it just drop. Let the very top of that left arm become very heavy. Heavy, heavier, guys. Good. Push into the wall with your right hand. Look under your right armpit. Keep drawing your right hip back. Keep drawing your right hip back. Perfecto. And then exhale, release. Left hand to the wall and then come up, rest, and we'll switch. So Parvita, this is revolved trikonasana. So, <clears throat> and I don't, I, I just hope that I, I just hope that my what I'm demonstrating is is what I'm saying right but here and so the top of my head should stay towards that wall, even as I drop here. You see so even if I as I let this arm come down watch the difference when let this arm become very heavy. You see, and then I want to push and look underneath. So I'm still trying to keep length in my right side body and my, especially that right outer hip. Go the same place here, left leg in front, step back. So the right toes face the wall, left toes face the wall. Turn your outer hips in. So it's an internal rotation. You can lift your inner um, left arch, draw your outer left foot down, and then with your outer foot, drag your hip back. Really press down into the mat with that outer left foot. And then notice that that will adjust your hip. Draw the hip back, nice, nice. Check your ears in line with your upper arms. Release the wall with your right hand and then take it across, but let it be heavy and then follow it. Yeah, go with it. Good. It should be moving your left, your upper right arm closer to your left foot. 
Good. Now push, drag your outer left hip back. Look under your armpit, left armpit. Nice, guys. Perfecto. Perfect. And then exhale, release. Perfect. Perfecto. Let's see if I can do uh, Parita Trikonasana again. So what I think I'm gonna do, well, I wanna face you guys. Wendy, just kidding. I wanna face you guys. So I'm gonna do it opposite of what y'all are gonna do. But I've got one heel to the wall and then I'll come forward. And actually I'll just have one block, right? And I'll come forward and bring the hand down against the block. I wanna keep the head out in line, out in front. I also wanna keep the back heel to the wall. I'll drag the outer right hip back, bring the block across. So if I could press down, now when I press down, guys, not this, keep watching. I wanna press and lengthen. Try to get that length here. Keep the hip drawing back. You may even have to kind of lift the block up. Look over the shoulder. I still can't see myself. Here, okay. So it's gonna be your left heel against the wall and your right leg out in front. Your left heel to the wall and your right leg is in front and you only need one block. So left heel to the wall, right leg forward and see how far you can walk the right leg out. And then watch here, draw your outer hip in like this. Ugh. Outer left hip and use your hand even, but draw in. Now take your block in your left hand, come forward, bring your block, spring it out in front of us under your left hand. Right hand to your hip. Draw your right hip back with your right hand. Bring your block outside of your right ankle bone. Draw your ankle bone out. Drag your right hip back. Don't lean, but extend your spine and then twist. Look over your right shoulder. Good. See how long you can get the spine? So you move forward. Great, guys. See if you can bring the back left rib down and the outer right rib up to the ceiling and then release and switch. Perfect. Perfecto. And then switch sides. So it'll be our opposite leg. Right foot. Yeah. Left. So the block now can go in your right hand because when we first come forward, we bring the block right out in front of the toes. So as you come forward, draw your left hip back and bring your block out in front. That way we get this established, the movement here. So get the length in the spine. Instead of this, use that block. Maybe you have to lift it up. More lift, you can get more extension. Turn the outer hip back. You can bring that block outside of the foot, but don't lean with your torso. Push with your right hand. Look to your left. Twist to your left. That's it. That's great, guys. Everybody, everyone take the center of the back of your head back some. Great. Great, 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 great. Great. And then exhale, release. Perfecto. Excellente. Ah, very, very good. Um, that can be pretty, pretty challenging. So let's see if we can do it. I think the hardest way to do this is actually, let's see, one more time. Block. Right leg forward, no wall, just the block. You don't even have to have two, maybe just one to the upper legs. That outer left hip turns forward. And then walk your feet and your legs apart as far as you can. You'll come forward, you'll squeeze the block. You've got to squeeze the block and watch the hip, draw the hip back. 
Let's see if we can keep the head here, drop, hold the, the shin. We want to pull the right hip back and begin to rotate the chest. Rotate the chest here. Okay, so take your time. It's kind of a tough way to do it, but block at your upper thighs, right leg in front, left leg back. And then watch, so that left hip probably is going out at an angle to the left. Go ahead and lift your left heel and take it to the left some. And then see if you can feel a little more engagement in the inner left thigh. Good, now come forward so that your torso is parallel. Draw your outer right hip back, use your hand. Can bring your left hand to your right shin below the knee or as far down as the ankle, below the knee or to the block even. Now draw the outer right hip back guys and look to the right, look to the right. Good, great, and exhale, release, perfect. Perfecto, switch sides. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, left leg forward, right leg back. You've got the block, yeah. And then you can lift your right heel, take it to the right, and you'll feel that kind of rotate into the block. Come forward and then draw your left hip back. Here, you're just gonna let that right arm, it comes heavy, let it come down. You can hold the shin, extend the spine, look, to your left. So use your inner thighs against the block, draw in, and then twist at your thick ribs, guys. That's it. That's perfecto. Great, 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 great. And then exhale, release. Look down, come up. That was excellent. Excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my two blocks and maybe you use a blanket <clears throat> if you want. That can be for your back knee. But I'm going to use my two blocks and I'm going to come into a lunge with my right leg in front and my left leg back like this. And I'm just going to take a few moments to kind of rock into this. And then I'm going to bring the inner left thigh down. The knee will come down last. And then I'll flatten that left foot. I want to push into the blocks. You may even need to bring them higher here. And I want to bend that right knee oh, here. And we may be able to release and stretch up. And then we'll come here, back to here, and then we'll switch, okay? So, and that was really comfortable with the blanket behind the left knee. Come into a lunge, right leg in front, left leg behind. Mm -hmm. Now, and I didn't do this part, but let's do it. I didn't, but we'll, I'll do it now. So you're in this lunge, yes, and you've got your blocks out in front. Don't bring your knee down yet, but just kind of rock forward and then back, really pushing that left heel back. Do that three times. Just kind of rock into the right foot. Come onto your left toes and then push as heavily as you can into your left heel. And then we'll come center. Now, guys, I want you to draw your right foot. Don't move it, but just pull it back like this. Drag it back energetically. Pull your left foot forward and see if you can bring your hands right to your upper right leg bone. Bend the knee, lift the chest. You've got to draw your feet together. Hug your feet towards one another. And then hands down, left knee down. So you'll bring the inner left thigh down first. Inner left thigh. So lead with the top of the inner left leg. Adjust your blocks. Maybe they need to be higher. But once you bring your left knee down, then flatten your left foot. And I really try to get 
the outer left foot grounded. So the pinky side of my left foot grounded. That's hard. Check. It may be lifted. It may not be against your mat or against your blanket or whatever you're, you're using there. So here, hold your blocks. Press through that foot. So if you can kind of come to your toes, left toes, push, and then flatten that foot, roll to the outer foot. You'll feel the entire outer left leg. Don't come up yet. Walk your right foot forward and bend your knee. Bend your right knee. And I want, as you're doing this, walk your right foot forward, bend your right knee, See if you can get your right knee, and it won't, but see if you can get it to move over your right toes. So bend. Don't lean forward, guys. Lean your torso back. And then bring your hands. Maybe you can bring them to the leg, right upper leg bone. Make space at your hip flexor. Hug your feet together. Arms can go up. And torso can lean back. Great, and exhale, release. Nice, guys. That was wonderful. Now, if you can, well, just come out if you can't jump switch. But if you can jump switch, jump switch. Y'all remember jump switching? No, no. Watch. Ah, I can still do it. I don't know. I tried to do a cheerleading move. So I was a cheerleader, you know, the one where you go and you, I thought I broke my ankle. I was like, I will never do that again. I thought it would be so easy to just, ha, ah, touch your toes. No. Oh, that was like 10 years ago. So I'm out of that. Already. Don't laugh, Krista. <laughs> so you've got your left leg in front. You're in that lunge, remember? And then you come forward, you do that part three times, which I really feel like that opens or awakens or kind of engages that inner um, right leg, the inner part of that leg. Engage that part. And when you're pressing the heel back, kind of um, see if you can extend through the arch. Good, good, good. And then here, once you've done that three times, hug your feet together. You don't move them, but you pull them together and then come up. So the knee is still lifted, but see if you can get your hands right to the top of your left leg bone and then kind of lean back. Really hug those feet though. Hug the feet, hug the feet to the midline and then bring your hands down. And then you'll bring your back knee down. <clears throat> And as that back knee comes down, you lead with the inner thigh. So this one we did, at, interestingly. Oh boy, and I wish I could remember the whole workshop. But this one was part of a scoliosis workshop on how to even out the pelvis. This. So when you're doing things like this, it does have a purpose. And it's just about trying to find that evenness and lifting your hips in the front of your pelvis evenly. And that not just goes from uh, up down, but side to side. And th this workshop was about scoliosis. So it's about trying to even here at the, at the hips, the low back, which is a lot of times what people feel, but from... <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> Wendy told me to move it along. Okay, so now, <laughs> okay, I forgot y'all were in this. Okay, so now bend your left knee a little bit deeper. Make sure you can press your outer foot down. Come to your fingertips, lean back, really open up the front of your right leg. If you can, take your arms up. Now you still kind of draw your feet towards one another as you're in this. Good, arms up and back, lean back, Diana, good. Open up the front of the right hip and then release. Ah, okay, now what was I saying? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wendy. <laughs> okay, so forget that. And then I'm gonna take a blanket because I promised myself we would do pigeon today. So what you guys can do is you can use a blanket behind you if you want, and you can use a blanket in front of you. My favorite way, let's see. I have a thousand favorite ways to do this. So you could take a blanket for the left knee or the left leg and one for the right. And so what I'm going to do is sit in front of the blanket, but I'll come into pinwheel with my right leg over in front. And this may be it really. Okay, so if you're thinking, well, my hips are just too tight for this and there's absolutely no way um, that I'm going to be able to do this. So make adjustments. So right leg on the blanket, left leg behind pinwheel. And what I'm thinking you can do is an adjustment Ah, that feels good. And then you draw that outer right hip back. This part of your outer right knee and hip goes back. Oh, windy, windy, windy. And then you can L shape with your left hand and then you'll rotate down. So like this and kind of lean forward as well. Lean forward, so take your left, that's it, Lisa. Try to get the left upper leg bone to rotate down towards your mat, and then come forward with your torso. Take your left leg back, you can come onto your left toes, straighten your left knee, wiggle your left leg back, and then like we did a moment ago, flatten the left foot. Flatten the left foot. Good. So guys, you shouldn't be leaned over. Don't lean over to your right. And that front leg is at a 90 degree angle. Good, that's it. It's at a 90 degree angle, your front hip. That's great, Aiden, great. Your front leg is 90, not, not at a 60 or a, 30, I don't even know if that makes sense, but 90. Good, now everyone roll to your outer left knee and roll to your outer left foot. Great, 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 great. And then release, perfect. Now, I know that we think that, well, I don't really know what we think, but the front, the back leg is the key. The back leg is the key. So opposite side, but the back leg, this leg is the key, mainly because it has a lot of trouble internally rotating, which is what it's doing when it goes behind you. So the back leg is the key. So watch. If you want to go deeper here, as you take that right leg back, watch, I've got to lift my left sitting bone up because I don't want to lie on it or, or lean over into it. But watch the right leg. That's the leg that gets you grounded. So lengthen out your back leg. Your back leg will adjust your front leg and it will also adjust your hips. Think of your hip points going forward, lining up forward. Another way to feel um, maybe a misalignment in the hips or in the lower back. So you start in the pinwheel and don't lean over guys. Remember that you take your weight off of that left sit bone. Take your right leg back. And when you take your right leg back, come forward with your torso. So bring your torso over your front leg and then straighten your back leg. Good, 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 good. Now make your back leg your focus and make your back leg longer. So lift your left sitting bone up and then stretch your right leg as far behind you as you can take it. 
and you'll notice that that gives an adjustment on the front hip. Good. <clears throat> so your outer, your left sitting bone is not against your mat. It, there is this movement or this action of drawing it down, but it, you're not resting all of your weight on, on it. Good, good, good. Come forward if you can. Good, 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 good. Great. And then release. Ah, very good, guys. Very good. Go ahead and I'm gonna come for, I'm gonna do Opa Vista really quickly and then we'll come down for our back bend. So I'm gonna do it two different ways and go as far as you can. And you can use blocks as well but I'm gonna take one blanket and sit on the edge of the blanket center of my mat. Fold it neater than this though, but I'm gonna come at the edge of it. And then I'll take the legs out. And the first thing guys that I wanna check is that the inner thighs here are rotating down. So the inner gully, that indention at the very top of the legs rotates onto the floor like this, right? And then use a block if you need one, but I'm gonna bring the left arm out in front and I'm gonna let the torso go forward with the left arm y'all want. And then I'm gonna swing this left arm. And when I do that, I wanna take it wide out as far as I can, grab the foot, Bend the left elbow, right fingertips are on the mat, move the nose to the knee. Watch the left leg. So instead of this, I wanna really reach into my left foot. And again, that inner left growing down. Okay. And then we'll do that. We'll do the revolved version of that. So make sure rotate the buttock flesh, if you're on a blanket, you can take your hands to that blanket. I'm gonna turn so you guys can see. And you'll take your hands here like this, watch. And you lift up, moving the sitting bones up, and then you roll for, you kind of take the blanket too. You see here. Even out your 10 toes so that they face the ceiling, heels are even, and then adjust the flesh. You can bend both of your knees. Keep your heels grounded though, and then do this. And then straighten by pushing from your inner thigh to your inner heel. Bring your left arm forward, slide it out in front of you, and then begin to swing it to the right and catch the right foot. You've got to really swing the arm pretty far, pretty long. Good. Stay center heels. <clears throat> That's it. Center heels. Great, 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 Michael. Great. Diana, lean forward. Bring your left, nope, lean into your inner thigh. So bring your left back rib down towards your inner knee. That's it. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, great, great. Now you guys reach into your left foot. So make your left leg longer, make your left leg longer. And then come up, inhale, look up, and then exhale, come center and we'll go opposite. So again, adjust the buttock flesh. That looks great guys, actually here. And then you always do this. You could use both hands, but remember the inner gully down, lower buttock flesh, same as in Sukhasana. And then right arm forward. And, and when you do that, you don't wanna go here, but you actually wanna lean in with that arm and then swing it across. So make it, you don't wanna do this but you wanna make it very long so that that entire right side of your spine is long. 
Come here, grab the left foot, nose to the knee. The left elbow can bend and the left hand or left fingertips can stay against the mat. Yeah, swing. If you make the, the arm really, really long, the right arm, it'll give a little bit of extra space to grab the ankle, grab the shin or grab the foot. Bend the elbow, nose to the knee. Good. Now, everyone take your back right rib cage and move it away from your spine. Kind of rotate it down towards your mat. Nice, 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 nice. Great. Great. And then come back to the center. And we'll keep our legs in that upa vista. And I'm gonna do that again, but the revolve version. So watch, center the 10 toes. So they go up, kneecaps go up, inner groin goes down. I'm gonna turn the palm of the hand up, but I shall just take that right arm to the left with the palm up, just like this, palm up. Left hand can assist me here. And then I'm gonna swing, grab the foot. Right hand grabs the right foot. Watch the right elbow it bends. And then I'll left arm over the ear. I want to bend the elbow. Look up. Reach into your left leg as well. Reach into your left leg as well. So maybe you can only get here, right? But we're trying to bring the right arm, right hand palm up to the left towards the inner left foot. Lean in, begin to sweep the back of your right hand out in front of you all the way across until you grab your foot, bend your elbow, grab your foot. Take your left arm, take it over your head and grab your right toes. Good, good. And if it can't go over the head, take it to the hip, that's it. And kind of just turn that left shoulder back. There you go. There you go, Dana. Bend the elbow. Bend the elbow up. Bend the elbow up. See if you can look up. Look up to the ceiling. You guys turn your gaze towards the ceiling. Nice. And then release. Very nice. And I didn't tell you how to release, but you can release. It's too late now, but just here. And then go opposite. So left arm, and I try to get those fingers, left fingers past the foot. And you come here and grab, grab and use that elbow down. That right arm, it can go here and then over. So you really wanna take your left, right leg and make it longer because it will shorten it will shorten. So take your left leg, your right leg, your opposite leg and make it longer and take your gaze up. That's it to the ceiling, turning the back of your least. That's nice, 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 nice. Great. And then exhale, release. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to take a couple of rounds of Ustrasana. That'll be uh, that'll be my back then. We we still may do set to banda, but for for um, ustrasana you can use a strap or you can even use block. Remember the catch to to ustrasana is that your hips go forward. So when you're doing ustrasana, if you're using blocks, take your hips forward, lift your breastbone and bring your hands, even if it's your fingertips and press. If you can go deeper than that, you'll reach back, even if it's one at a time and grab your heels, heels of your feet with your hands, press. So Ustrasana, and we'll do that twice. You can also use your hips to a wall and then lean back, okay? So blocks are strapped to your feet, but take Ustrasana 
Good, good. Hips go forward, guys. Remember your hips go forward. Good. Take a few deep breaths in Ustrasana. And then come seated and we'll do it one more time. And I think maybe, let's see. I mean, that's a different pose, but it still gives you a little bit of a, of a back bend. That's great, Michael. That's great. That's great. That's perfect, though. There you go, Wendy. Even doing it without going all the way back. So we'll do it just one more time, and I'll show how you can come here, put your hands at your low back, here and your fingers are down so that you could do this and as you're stretching your fingers towards the mat you lift the chest and you just lean back as far as you can you may at some point be able to release and grab that's great that's perfecto and then you guys exhale come on down and we'll take Adho Mukha Varasana to release the back. So you'll extend the arms out, lift the elbows and the wrists, bring the head down, draw the navel up away from your mat here, trying to kind of open in your, your low back. Good, your hips ground, so your bottom goes to your heel. Good. Come to dog pose, guys. Another nice way to release the back. Come from your child's pose into dog pose. And again, fill in the low back. So no, don't do this, but move the front of the rib cage up. Fill in your low back by using the abdominals and using the arms. Good, open up the low back. So the heels of your feet can tuck out away from each other just a little bit to give that internal rotation. Good, 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 good. And then exhale, come down, perfect though. And we'll do our inversion and you guys can do whatever inversion that you want to do. You could go legs up the wall, Headstand, handstand, wall L. Or if you cannot invert, you can do, lately I've been doing um, Kurmasana, which would be just to sit, knees bent, heels down, toes up. You kind of reach underneath and grab, and we could probably all do this after inversion. And then you bring your head down. But go for your inversion, wherever that's going to be. If it's headstand, you want to interlace your fingers so that your fingers face your head and you really grip, which is, you know, in the very beginning, well, I don't know about the very beginning, but in the early days, Iyengar would say, don't grip the back of your head and, he and headstand. Or actually, I think he's always said, grip the back of your head. And then somehow along the way, it got changed by some of the senior teachers. And so we kind of went back and forth on that. But definitely in Shirsasana, hold the back of your head with your hand. That's great, Holly. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. Those of you in Shirsasana, make sure that you have some even weight from your outer hands to your elbows, which is where the weight is, is 
is placed, uh, but it still should be even. And if you can find that evenness, you'll find your balance automatically. Once you come out of your headstand, if that's what you're in, release your neck by maybe taking child's pose, dog pose, or standing in Uttanasana. Let your, if you're in child's pose, let your forehead rest. If you're in dog pose, you still want to draw the abdominal wall back. You can even use a block for your forehead if you're in dog pose. And then you guys, as you exhale your breath, go ahead and begin to bring yourselves up. And if you were <clears throat> in legs up the wall, you can begin to move your way down from that. And when you find your way down and out of uh, whatever inversion you were in, then let's go ahead and come on to our mat and we'll do Supta Panangustasana. I'm just trying to figure out how, how I want to do that. Let's see. We'll do the old fashioned way. We'll do it with a block and a strap. And so you'll come supine. If you have a wall, that's great. And if you don't, don't worry about it. But what we'll do to start, <clears throat> and I'm not going to use the block to start, but what I'll do is I'll bend the right knee and bring the strap to the foot. And then y'all watch, I'm going to lift the head and shoulders and then extend the left leg. And I want to just let that left heel float. And then I'll change. You see, so I kept the head and the shoulders lifted and then we'll move on. So first thing is to come grounded, knees bent so you get a lot of length in your lower back. You've got both of your knees bent and have enough room so that when you extend that left leg, you can really extend it. So go ahead and bring your strap around your right foot, strain your right leg, lift your head and shoulders and pull your, your nose to your right knee. Use your arms, really pull, widen your elbows, keep your head lifted, extend your left leg and just let your left heel float uh, over your mat. Left heel is floating, it's not grounded, both knees are straight. Engage the core, lift up, touch the nose to the knee. Keep moving your femur bone away from you or down and then switch. See if you can keep the head and shoulders lifted, bend the right knee, bring the left into the strap, left foot into the strap. Good, pull the, the leg in, straighten the, the right leg, let it extend down, hover the heel, hover the heel. Good, 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 good. Great, great, great. Now move your femur bone away from you engage your core and see if you can really lift your head and your shoulders good thigh bone back or down nice 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 and then exhale release good lower your head and shoulders bring your feet to your mat we'll take our strap around the right foot again straighten the left leg Move your right leg back so that that outer ankle bone and outer hip line up. Reach up, grab your strap with your right hand, turn your right toes to the right, your right knee to the right, and take your right leg out, go up and over your block. <clears throat> 
go up and over your yoga block and turn the top of your right femur bone to your block. So the top of your right thigh bone is against your block. Really use your right hand pull down. See that your right toes are facing the floor and that your right kneecap is facing the floor. And I didn't show this in my instructions, but everyone, as you exhale, bend your left knee in Baddha Konasana. Bend your left knee and just let it fall out to the side. The left knee. No, right knee is straight. Yeah, left knee. Good. And then let that outer foot relax. See if you can let the outer left knee relax. Straighten the right knee. Move the right thigh bone back. See that you feel the spreading of the muscles around the sacrum. The space between the hip points spreads. Good. Let the outer left knee relax. Move the abdominals to the left. Bend the right elbow. Draw the toes onto the floor. And then go ahead and bring your left foot to the mat and then straighten your left knee. Bring your right leg up. Take it over in the opposite direction. So don't roll onto your left hip, but keep your outer left hip tucked in. Outer left hip tucked in. Good. Good, 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 good. Let's see. You've got your right leg, right, going over to the left. Move your abdominals to the right. Good. Look to the right, guys. So you don't want to roll onto that outer left hip. And then bring your right leg up. Bend your right knee and release. And you can move your block over to the side, opposite side, left side, and then bend your left knee, take your strap to your left foot. Remember the left leg goes up and we move it back so that it's not moving towards the chest, but we've got some room here at the hip flexor. So you can even use your left hand to really move that left thigh bone back. Good, good, good. Femur bone moves away. Draw down into the foot with the strap. Reach up, grab your strap with your left hand. Before you take your left leg out, turn your toes and your left knee, and you may even be able to do that with your hand. And then let your left leg go out to the left, go up and over your block. And then that outer right hip and leg and outer knee, outer right um, rib goes down. So there's a lot there. If, um, imagine having 100 pounds of weight on the right side. So you want to really ground the right side so that you're able to really open and extend and stretch. Good. You, you keep yourself stable here by using your abdominals. So go back to drawing your abdominal wall, your side abdominal wall down. And then let your right knee bend out in Baddha Konasana. Let the outer foot relax. See if that outer ankle bone will begin to fill into the mat. Yep. Keep your left leg really straight, moving your thigh bone away. And then see, maybe you can feel uh, the space between the hip points increasing or that this space has become even. Use your abdominals, use your core. Remember, you draw your side abdominal wall down. Really, it feels like your side ribs draw down. Side ribs come down. Great, 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 great. Go ahead and bring your right foot to the mat. Straighten your right knee. Bring your left leg up. Take it across. Switch the hand that holds the strap. Good. Now here, it's, let's see, 
The hips are really, really compacted here. Imagine this being as if you're crossing your leg. You're just seated in um, a comfortable seated cross leg position on the sofa. So it's like you're crossing your legs or in a chair. And then when you do this, you should feel that the area around the sacrum, the muscles that support the sacrum uh, move away. Good, 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 good. Keep the inner thighs rotating in towards each other and see if you can move that outer left tip away from you. And then go ahead and bring it back to the center. Mm -hmm. And release, bend both of your knees and put both of your feet on the mat. So let's see, I'm gonna do, I think that um, revolved version again. And I'm gonna show the opposite. We're gonna start with the right going to the left, but I'm gonna show opposite. So I've got a block to that outer hip and then I'll take the leg up. And what I'm noticing that, uh, and you can do this this way. There's more than one way to do this revolve supta pose. But what I'm noticing is this, we're kind of doing this. And I really want to keep the hips compacted in this version. So I'll bring a block there. And then I'm going to try to not knock that block over as I take the leg over. So in other words, don't roll over into your block. If you could hold that block, do that. That hip really tucks in that outer hip. So bring your block medium level outside of your left hip, your outer left hip. So that greater trochanter and then draw the block in. Use your hand. Take your strap around your right foot. Right leg is up, left leg is straight. Can you guys go ahead and let's see, take your left hand to your block that's outside of your left hip. Now take your right leg over and you're holding with your right hand just so you can keep that outer left hip in. Get as far as you can go. Tuck the outer left hip away from your block. Grab now with your left hand. Take it a little bit further. And maybe you can bring that inner right thigh to the block that's outside of the left hip. Don't roll to the hip, but go ahead and bring that inner thigh to the block. Keep going, Lisa. Now, nope. <laughs> she turned the block up. I guess that's a good idea, yeah? There you go. Bring the inner right thigh to your block that's outside of your left hip. Keep that left hip tucked in, tucked in, tucked in. Beautiful. Bring it up and switch. That was excellent. There's multiple ways to do this, and each one hits a different target of the pose. Okay. Each one hits a different target. There's a different um, effect. Okay, so switch. So you start with the hand that doesn't feel normal to do this with. So the block goes to the right, <clears throat> belt around the left foot, hold with your left hand, but tuck the block in and then take it over. And you'll get as far as you can, and then you'll bring that right hand, and then watch, go a little bit deeper, bringing that inner thigh, oh my goodness, to the block. Move your abdominal wall to the left. Move your gaze to the left. Yep. And you want to keep reaching and drawing to your left as you're trying to get that inner left thigh to your block that's outside of your right hip. Keep your right hip tucked in. Keep your outer right hip tucked in. That's it, like you're crossing the legs. The inner thighs work together, they rotate in. 
One more attempt. You can bend the elbow. See if you can get that inner thigh down against the block. Look to the left. Great, 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 great. Great, great. And then come back to the center. <clears throat> And you can exhale to release and release your belt, your straps. And I've got my two blocks. I'm staying on my mat. I'm gonna flatten them and face the corner edges to each other. So it's at the outer lateral buttock like this. The corner edges face each other. So like that. And then I bring the feet up, soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana, and then I'll roll up and over those blocks. Oh, the bottom is elevated, the bottom is relaxed, the feet are relaxed, the top half of your body is relaxed. And we'll hold that for a moment, and it's really easy to come out of that, but we'll rest here for a moment. So those blocks are really supporting the lateral buttocks, the bottom, it lifts the bottom up. So the corner edges of those blocks face in some, yeah, yeah. And to get your bottom up, bring the soles of your feet together and then roll your feet over onto the mat and your bottom lifts up. See if you can keep your bottom relaxed, some arms out. You can even close your eyes for a moment. Soften the abdominals. Yeah. If you notice the blocks are tucking the outer or the lateral buttocks in, this is the space that we always tuck in. External, internal, we always tuck the outer hips back in to the midline. Just a few more moments here. To come out of this, guys, all you do is bring the soles of your feet onto your mat and your knees together, and then your bottom just relaxes to the mat. You keep the knees bent, knees, inner feet together. You move your blocks out to the side and we'll prepare for Shavasana. So if you want, you can just extend the knees and stay here as you are. Or you could pull your knees in, roll over and move. Maybe you want legs up the wall or you want um, to come onto blankets or bolsters. Even your legs in a chair is fine for Shavasana. The arms go out to the sides, the palms of your hands up towards the ceiling. As you exhale the breath, let go every muscle and every bone in the body can relax or become heavy. You can move your awareness inward, tuck your senses in.
begin to deepen your breath. Move your awareness back into the room. Small movement in the fingers and in the toes when you're ready. Bend the elbows, bring your hands to your belly or to your heart. And take your arms over your head, full body stretch. Bring the side abdominal wall towards your mat. Release the arms to the side body and just rest there for a few moments. As you deepen the breath, you can bend the knees one at a time and your feet can come to the mat, the floor, the wall. Lift your bottom and lengthen your sacrum and your tailbone. Reground your bottom and then pull one knee into the chest at a time. Wrap the arms around the knees. Keep the outer hips long, but you can move from side to side or front to back. Roll over onto the right and we'll hold there just a few moments in a fetal position. So you can use your right arm or your right hand to support your head. <clears throat> Come to any seated position that you would like. Keep your eyelids heavy and closed down. Take a few moments in silence. The hands can come heart center, thumbs to the third eye or hands just resting at your legs. But here, take a moment in silence to honor the true self. The true self is not the body, not the mind, not the intellect. Guruji would instruct us to raise the chest, to raise the sternum, and to extend the cervical neck, and to make the head straight to see what freedom comes to our mental state. Thank you guys very much. Namaste.